<laughs> yeah. Um, as you can see, decals are going on. Hey everyone, it's Tony for emodels.co. I'll try that again. emodels.co.uk. Welcome to part seven of the Volunteer and Rossi build. Don't worry, you've not missed anything. Uh, I'm actually filming out of sequence now because I'm up to here, but I've got to come back to film an intro because episode six overran by about an hour. Yeah, I know. Um, I was hoping to get it all in one episode, but no, I've got to split it into two episodes for the painting. So, we'll continue with the painting, where we shall be working with Starship Filth for the the wash type thing. And then we're going to use the rest of the MIG oils that we've looked at in episode 6 in the intro to sort out the rest of the... You'll see when you get there. Uh, so, if you haven't done so already, pause here, go get yourself a brew and get some biscuits and whatever, and then sit back, relax and enjoy the rest of the painting episode that leads up to this eventually. That makes sense in my head. <laughs> This is the bit where uh, at least one of you sits forward in the chair waiting for me to knock something over and spill it and things like that. Yeah, you know who you are. So, old list thinners. And one of these little votive candle things. Or whatever they're called. Vot votive? Floative? Votive? Something like that. I don't know. Don't tell the missus I've nicked it though. Uh, it's a good plastic base. It's like really chunky and solid. And it's literally just a squirt of thinners into the pot. So it's like less than what? One mil. Could use a mil if you want. It's just a small quantity. Like so. Squeeze out the excess. Drop that over there in my little pot. Cap on. <laughs> before I spill it. And then taking a darkish colour oil paint from the 502 upside long range. Now it is Starship Filth and it is like Rocky and Horse Poo. It's dead hard to get hold of everywhere. Uh, it's one of those things where unfortunately you're going to have to have, have, get your words up, have to sit there watching all the websites um, until it comes out. And once it's out move quickly because it will sell out very very quickly indeed. And we're literally just a small quantity on the, the end of a grotty old brush that you don't mind gooming up. This is actually my oil paint dry brushing brush. That works better in my head as well. So we're just literally going to mix all that around and we're after a nice runny consistency. Like so. That's possibly a little bit too wet. So just from the cap I'm going to pinch it a little bit more. Like so. Now a good test of this. If you have, uh, well, I'm just going to dry them off to the side on a piece of kitchen roll. If you're able to get hold of some of these gloves, they come in very handy for not transferring fingerprints all over the place for a start. You also start getting paint everywhere on your hands. I'm just going to pop that on, and you can see straight away if you crunch your hand up. Make a little first, you get all these little wrinkles all over the place. So I'll just uh, get a couple of wrinkles like that. Get my brush back. And a little whop around. Good test to see if this is ready. Just dot some in your hand and it should run off. There we go. Nice little run, just there. Oh, getting pictured, Tony. Let's do that again. See, you can see it now, zipping off. Like that down the crease. Let's do another one. And it zips off down the crease. So that's a good test, that. So I'm happy enough with where that is now. Let's get the excess off. Let's so really get you all in. Wipe the glove. I'm actually going to wear this glove whilst I'm doing this, just so I don't get the, uh, the hoil paint everywhere on my fingers. I'm going to use a really thin tip brush like that. Now, I think I mentioned this in, a, in the videos previously. I have a whole bunch of oil paint only brushes and then I've got all my acrylic brushes off to the side over there. It helps to show you, doesn't it? Uh, so, do keep your oils and your acrylic brushes separate. And that way you don't have to worry about whether your brush will work or not. And I don't know if you can make that out. 
don't think you can. As soon as I touch the brush into the the thinners, it goes zip, straight up the bristles. So that's another good way of knowing that you're ready. And now, because we've got the gloss varnish, this should just shoot off down the panel lines that we have. And a good example of this will be just here. Now, if I uh, clear that background a little bit, put a little on my tube, half slash it filth. He says, no, don't you dare cross thread. There you go. There's something nice and nice and shiny. This is where my white balance goes all over and then, like that and ruins itself. Let's just load the brush again. Switch off to the side. And then on here, you should see it zip off. Like so, along the panel lines. So what we're doing now is we're creating depth where there wasn't any now don't worry if it looks a little bit too dark we can move this around it's not a problem so all this is done with one brush load should be able to move it around what you will find is it'll stick to the the more raised surfaces but that's fine once it starts drying off we can like rub over it with the cotton bud or something like that, just to remove it. Just gonna add some more in the uh, on this side. But if you're looking at this now, thinking, "Oh God, that looks rubbish," let it dry first before you do anything. If you start wiping at this now, what you'll do is you'll bring it across onto parts where you don't want the wash to be, and you'll actually filter this colour here, and you don't want that. So let it dry across this top here before you start rubbing away at it. And all we're going to do now is just pick out a couple of panel lines here and there just to add that little little depth. That's fascinating, it goes uphill. That's great. It's I've created anti gravity. <laughs> That's kinda of cool. I like that. Oh, small things, small minds. Yep, I know, I know, I can hear you. So it's basically everywhere now where we find a panel line. I'm just gonna run around. Just add a little bit of shadow. So if you do get any overspills like I've got some there on that knee pad, let it dry first and then come back with a, a cotton bud and it just wipes off because we've got the uh, the gloss varnish in the way, protecting that yellow underneath. It's okay, it's not a problem. Now, there is a detail there that I'm hoping I can pick out. So again, I'm just going to wipe over the top of it and then once that's dry, go over with the, the cotton bud. Ordinarily, I would do this after the decals. I just want to get some detail in there first before the uh, the decals come in. Oh, I'm losing my voice again. Not having that. Ooh, update on the tonsillitis thing. The specialist at the moment is happy enough that my voice is coming back properly. Um, he's going to leave the tonsils for the time being. He's going to look at it again in three months' time to see where we are and what's what. But for now, I think I'm keeping my tonsils. Now, there's this myth about being an adult <coughs> and tonsillectomy hurting more. And it is just that, it's a myth. We perceive it to hurt more because as we get older, we become, excuse me, we, we become madder. Great Northern England, North, Northern England expression. Mad. And for uh, our American cousins, mad basically means you're a bit soft. So the older we get, the softer we get. 
that is actually, uh, I do believe that's psychologically proven. And then you go back the other way, the old year, as you've brought your, uh, your pensionable years, you toughen up again. Stay shot, Tony. And hopefully. Oh, there we go, that was a good one. Right, just take a bit of that excess off. And if you do bob too much on there, it's not a problem. You see how it's wicking away? Let's see if we can get a bit closer. Do that again. Wall below them. No, do that again. Wall below them. Like so. Take that off. This is a piece of kitchen roll that you've got off camera. Dry your brush slightly. And then let your brush soak up the excess. It's not a problem. Your initial reaction is, oh, oh my god. And you go, that's it. Don't panic. Just take a breath. Dry your brush off and then wick away the excess. like magic. See? It's always repairable. I'm going to struggle to see the panel lines on this dark blue bit. So I might have to come back with some dry brushing on this later. Just to lighten that blue up a little bit. But we'll do that after the decals are on, I think. Or will we? I'm still planning that stage out in my head. Oh, I've created anti gravity. That's fantastic. I like that. Let's see if we do it again. How oh, cool is that? I've created anti gravity. And that. Quite possibly the best example of complete reaction I've ever seen. That was fantastic. Right, so I'm just going to bob some to these crooks and nannies here, just to give us a little bit of shadow where there isn't any. And again, don't panic if there's too much. Once it's dry, we can have a, a rub at it. And because the gloss varnish is there, it should just wipe off the parts that we don't want it to be in. That's a good one. So there's a belting example on the hip. I'm bringing in a shadow now. I'll get another one in there. Get one just in there. Stick one there. Make sure I'll just crap this panel line here. So I'm happy enough now with the lower half. So I'll bob that off just out the way there to dry off, and then I'll grab the top half. What's that in the, uh, the wash here as well? well? This is incredibly therapeutic, I must say. There we go. Picks up all that lovely detail. Let's go across there as well. And then on these white parts, particularly. Dry brush of white itself over the top will bring this out absolutely beautifully. It really will. So that's possibly a little bit too much there in that knuckle. So again, just wipe the the brush off to the side. Just work some of that away. Chop them. Get some more of that in there. Bit too much. Wipe off. I'm 
Got some lovely creases there again in the in the sleeves. So we'll throw some in there. Beautiful. Ribbon there. What else have we got? Right around that one there. Oops. Again, probably a bit too much. Just wipe off to the side and work away with the brush. Really isn't a problem. Stay calm. Breathe. It's gonna be okay, trust me. Ooh, that was a good one. Ooh, that is a good one. I like that same. So again, there's a couple of spots where it's uh, a little bit too heavy, but once it's dried, I'll give that a quick wipe. Just to see what's what with it. That's my crooks and nannies there. Uh, under there. Oh yes, I like that one. I do like that one. That's a belt of that one. Look at that. Lovely detail. A big advantage of using the Starship Filth is it's not as in your face as a black would be. Uh, a black on this thing would be a little bit too stark. Especially where we've got the white and the, the fluorescent yellow. Starship Filth is a beautiful colour. If you can get hold of it. It is incredibly difficult to get hold of. I'd say if you are lucky enough to find someone on a website somewhere, including the model website, get it as soon as you can because trust me it won't be there for long. And this tube I actually managed to get hold of from MIG Productions themselves and that was only because I was watching at 3 o'clock in the morning whilst I was on a night shift and they published it on their website. I literally just finished looking at something Gone off the page, come back, and there it was. So it just shows you. A little bit of patience. You will find it eventually. Shadow in there as well. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. I think at the time when I found this Starship Filth as well, I was watching something like seven different websites at least twice a day for five weeks. Gives you an idea that even somebody like me, who's contrary to popular belief, I don't actually have any inside information on Starship Filth. The amount of questions I get during the week where do I get Starship Filth from? So, no, do the same as me, just watch all the websites. 
I genuinely don't get any information from any of these companies about the products coming out. <gasps> Ooh, let's see if we can do the anti gravity thing again. Let's see if we can get you in. Look at that! Anti gravity! Fantastic. So that's a good example there. If we'd have used black for that, that would have been very, very much in your face. That's actually filth, won't be. Beautiful colour. Right, so I think that's about as far as I can go on the upper body. Flick some out of the way there, that's a bit too strong. And that was a waiting game. A couple of days for that to dry, and then. Uh, We'll come back, close varnish it again. We'll do some dry brushing just to bring out all the details. And from there, after that, yeah, it'll be another gloss varnish and then decals. Oh, decals. Okay, joke. So we've had. Uh, Overnight now for this pin wash to dry. Let's see if we can sort of lighten it up a little bit. There we go. How's that? How's that? So, grotty old cotton swabby type thing that I've used before on other bits and bobs. Just going to very quickly just have a quick run round in some of these little scruffy bits that haven't quite gone on properly will now just rub off. So, this is the point I was trying to make. If it doesn't go quite according to plan as you're putting it on, the, the pin wash on. Don't panic, don't start scrubbing straight away. Let it dry first and then you can come back and take care of it like this. It's not a huge problem. Now this shoulder part here is going to be absolutely ideal for the next few techniques that we're going to do. So it's going to scrub away that bit there as well where it's gone a little bit wonky and hinky. So the idea is now that the, the wash has gone into all the, the recessy type parts Again, that'll be a good area to work with. If your cotton swab does do that and get a bit too grubby, just swap for a new one. And when you get the new one, just give it a, a quick rubbing, just to get rid of the how compact they are when they come out of the little tub that you've got them stored in. Give it a quick rub, just to soften it a little bit. And then go to work again. So the idea is now all the raised parts is going to take away, you can see there, just how grubby it gets. So we're going to take away from all the raised parts, the Starship Filth Wash. Like so. And it's just a case of going around. Don't rub too hard, but rub hard enough that you're going to remove the wash. Look at that, just brings out the detail nicely. We like that, we like that a lot. So that's that, around there, that front there, just come across, uh, into that heli ball there, and once we're happy with this we'll seal this in again with a gloss varnish, uh, which will then stabilise all this lovely wash that we've done. Ready for the dry brushing stage. 
So just have a quick run round first before you actually commit to the, the gloss varnish. Because like I say, once you've sealed it, it's in. And then, you know, you'd have to do some overpainting to take care of it. If there are any bits that you don't want there. So I'm just going to run across that seam there straight away. I'm after some of that shadowing there. Like so. Just going to swat out of the end. I didn't use the old one because that's actually quite firm. I've had something on that that I don't quite remember what that was. But it's gone solid. Either way. So just run around there. Around all these seams here. Across the boot. Like so. Across the thigh, ribbing thing, like so. Just some details here on the boot. Lovely. Right, I'm happy enough with that now. Gloss varnish. Oh, we've had a, a report of a casualty. Literally just now. Um, I've got my airbrushing bits because I'm cleaning it. Um, Chris Lange has literally just been in touch with me and he's, he's done to me. He's managed to knock. Uh, let see if I've got mine knocking him out. Where's mine? Oh, subconsciously I may have moved mine. Knowing that Lange was about to knock it over. Anyway, I've got a, a bottle of that stuff knocking about still, but it's all grubby and dirty and horrible. That's the one I use for cleaning my brushes with. And it was literally right here a minute ago. It's gone. It's poof! Wow! Okay, yeah, anyway, um, he's managed to knock his over. And he's going better than I have. He's managed to knock it onto something he's actually working on. And hopefully, hopefully, he's managed to get me a message in time to not start rubbing away at things because that's going to start stripping anything, particularly the oil paints that he's got knocking about live. Where the hell's that gone? I had that earlier. Anyway, because uh, I'm going to need it again soon because I've got some brushes to clean in a minute. So, from the oil brush brushes that I have, I've got a couple of these. These were, uh, let me see, I don't think I've got any more of those left. But these, when I first bought these, started off looking like this kind of thing, just from a different brand. So we can see how nice and neat and tidy that is, that's what they look like after a couple of years with the dry brushing. It's great. So, a couple of those. And if you paid any attention, that's actually the one I used for putting the Starship filth into the, the little pot last night, night before. So, right, the gloss varnish is dry. Gloss varnish is dry. I need a scrap of cardboard. That's my scrap of cardboard. Got a couple of boxes knocking about, but Every time I do this, I tear a flap off. There we go. Right there. And then I lose the flap. So, delivery box. Do we get our deliveries in? Literally just need something like that. And we're going to get some. I'm, I'm doing that all the time at the moment. Just any white. In this case, it's snow white from the Make 502 Abtai Lung range. And we're literally. Just going to take a little dot, about so big, yeah it's not massively overly generous or anything like that. Uh, if you can get the upside lung paints, do so, you'll pay a little bit extra for them compared to something like this, come here you, which is box standard uh, artist oils from a craft shop, craft shop that does hobby, yeah. including the name, if you're in the UK. Um, the difference being, the pigment in this is a lot finer than this one. This one's a bit oily, oilier as well, so it's got more linseed oil than this. If I do that, oh hang on, I'll tell you what, let's do a little demo. We'll do a side by side demo. You can see straight away, you've got bubbles of oil in there. 
if I take that spot there, you can see it's really, really greasy and horrible and stuff like that. Hopefully you can make that out. But you should be able to see over the next few minutes as I'm waffing away at you the expansion of the oil in the paint itself. Which you don't normally get with upside lung oils because it's all been ground finer. So I'm actually going to leave that for a few minutes to do its thing and you should hopefully see in the time lapse that I'm about to do. Let's bring that light down a little bit. That's the weird that has like a dark circle appear over there. So let's get some uh, get a bigger piece. So, artist oil. Yeah, it's been contaminated with another colour by the look of it. It's either that or the inside of my tube's gone rusty. Because there's definitely uh, a black edge to that. And lovely, I've managed to get it out of my glove. So, quick wipe on a, a rag off to the side. And get the outside lung stuff just here. Do the same. Big spot. Do a big spot this time. Get you that. It's nice that. And even that, just for a few seconds with you, you can actually see the ring of oil coming away there. So, uh, have another. Oh, yeah, that's going to be fun. So, that's artist oil, and that's MIG. Let the time lapse commence. So hopefully that's just shown. You know, I've walked away for about ten minutes, and I can I can see that it's come right over to where this groove is here, where I've written the A. Uh, let's see if we can get any closer to that. No, let's try and zoom. So just above that A there, uh, we've got this groove. I can actually see it's broaching through there. So if I left that for another half hour or so, like you're supposed to. When you're doing figure painting and stuff like that, that would go right over. Whereas I can see from the Meg stuff, there's absolutely no movement at all. It will do eventually, but in this case, it's not that much. So, basically, what we're going to do is zoom me back out again. Like that. I love this camera. This camera is brilliant. Literally, just a little dab on the brush and take most of it back off again. Like so. Take my suit back off again, like so. And we're just going to pick just at the top there. We'll literally pick that top edge of this crease. Alright, doesn't look like much right now. And I'm going to do a couple of flicks just there as well across them folds. So, do the same across these creases here. And the beauty is as well, because we used a gloss varnish. If we do manage to get some on the other colours, we can just wipe it away with a finger if we absolutely need to. And then right in the centre of where the muscles are on the, the bicep is, 
Just going to feather some on the top there. Just to give it that extra definition. Like I say, because of the, the gloss at the moment, we won't be able to see a great deal of what we're doing. Once we matte coat this, it'll just pop back out. You'll be able to see it a little bit clearer. I'm going to come across these extreme edges here. Like so. And the downside of using these oil paints is it will take a couple of days now for these to dry. But the good advantage of that is I can now go away and do other things. Like I can cut straight on a couple of the projects that I'm working on for my own channel. Over the next couple of days I can get stuff done for my uh, my brother's builds. On the, the 2000 building for him. This is the advantage of having, you know, like in my case, several uh, several builds going on all at the same time. There's always something to be done. There's always something to be worked on. So I'm just going to catch that extreme edge across the back here. And then across the top of that hump. Like so. those edges there. Oops. Like so. And then a couple of these ridges just to bring the white back. Like so. There we go. Alright, so that's the top one. Bring the legs in. Now the legs is not that much space to work with. But we do have some great folds. Just there, especially that thigh there. So, I'll just get some deliberately on the blue there. So you literally just come back with your glove, just wipe that, it's gone. That's the big, big advantage with oils. You get a good couple of hours whilst it's like this to play about with it. And you can you know, do things like wipe it away if you don't. If you put too much on, or it's in the wrong place. So I'll just go across there now, like so. Just throw some in the middle of that muscle there. On the thigh, and we'll do some... Just there too. Ooh, yay, I thought I had. One of the male also made a little boo-boo. Not sure. Also made a little boo boo like so. Get off. There we are. Alright. So let's brush up again. So yeah, we'll put some on the inside of that muscle there. Just blend that away. Like so. And then whilst we're here, I'm going to get some blue. Blue oil paint. So I'm just going to give that a quick wipe on the towel at the side of me. My grotty old paintbrushy towel. So, quick squish of the primary blue. Artist oil. And quick squish of the Gundam blue. So I can figure out which one's going to be better. Quick squish of the Gundam blue. Quick squish of the Gundam blue. It's in there somewhere. There he is. And so, that Gundam blue is more towards the, the light blue that we've got on there. Cool. Like that. Right, so, I'll go with this dark blue first to see what's what with it. 
it'll see straight away if you use an artist oil there's a lot more grease in there I'll call it grease it's actually linseed oil or something like that but you get the idea it's a little bit goopier and again we're just going to pick out the the top parts all the raised edges in fact that's too close let's go with the, the Gundam blue see what that does stay away from the white if you can it's a bit better Oh, I'm quiet again. Alright, who said good? I heard somebody shout good. Yeah, here we go. I always get filled by Gundam Blue because it is quite a light blue. It just doesn't make sense in your brain. some of that colour back, lovely, 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 so it's just toning down that blue as well, so that blue is a little bit dark, I can't quite match it, oh we like that, we like that, Edges here. Well, so I'll just bring them back. Like so. Lovely. That's better. Hopefully, the camera can pick that up. That's done the job nicely, especially that forearm. Four and one nicely, that is. And there we go. This raised patch of the knee. We need to be careful now with the yellow. Uh, like I say, we've gloss varnished, so if we do get some on the yellow, like that, it's not too much of a problem. If you wipe it away quickly, can get away with it. If I use the matte paint, that would now stick in all the the pits of the matte. But because it's uh, a gloss, obviously glossy shiny, so there's not a great deal for it to grip onto there. So it's not a huge problem. Don't go whacking straight away with any turps or anything like that. Or any thinners. Just go at it with your glove. If you're not wearing a glove, then your finger will do just as well. Just bear in mind that you got to try and you know, get it off your fingers after that then. So I don't know if you can make that out on the boot itself. It should brought that boot to life. And again we'll throw some on in the centre here. Just give the impression that there's a bulging thigh muscle under there. And then of course work into the groin into them folds. So 
it's now lightening that blue back up. Just a shade. Let's go across there a little bit. I'm going to get some onto the white areas then. Let's say just come back with your finger. Just give it a quick rub. It's gone. That's lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. There's one for you folks. There's another one for you. <laughs> Alright, lovely. I did have a yellow there somewhere. I'm sure I did. There it is. Yellow. Just to tone that vivid yellow down a little bit. Alright, you can go over there. Oh, big gurgle from the belly. Do excuse me. So get rid of you, get rid of you. Oh yeah, behave yourself. Get over here, stop your nonsense. I'll grab another flap. I'll grab some of this lovely, lovely primrose. It's like a primrose yellow. going to pick out key areas and all of the raised bits just knock that yellow down a little bit stop it being as gaudy It is. It's a gaudy little yellow, but I like that. Yeah, if you're going to go yellow, go yellow. How about it? Oh, that's brought that back lovely, that has. There we go. Dulled it right down. So it's not as in your face now. It's still a loud little monkey. But it's not as bad. So that's that. I'll just give his gloves a quick go. Yep. Won't you get in and behave yourself? Now of course be careful not to get too much on the uh, the metallic part of the gloves. There we go. Lovely. Like I say, you won't really notice the difference in that until you actually get some, uh, some matte varnish on there. Just to take that shine off. As far as I'm concerned, that's the paint job done. All I've got to do now is, uh, is gloss varnish that and then we're ready for decals. Over the top. Lovely stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Should fall out of the way. Yeah, that was you then, Langy. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Another shout. Oh, I've still got the chat on the screen. Right, shift. Um, yeah, breathe. I'm just going to do anything that doesn't so by now. So this is the, the grubby pot of thinners I was mentioning earlier. So literally now, the grotty old... No! <laughs> Look! The grotty old towel that we've got, I'm literally going to dab the brush into the thinner. And that's literally all you need with these oils. Literally dab, knock most of the excess off, and then... I'll take it with a quick rub. 
Again, like you would with acrylics, don't grab all your bristles and start twisting because that's the best way of yanking all your bristles out. Just give it a rub. If you need to, give it another soak and rinse. Like so. So it's literally just dab it in and then have a rub. There we go, job done. There's still a blue tinge there, but if I do this across my knuckle, there's nothing coming off. So that one's done. And again, the downside is you've got to leave that now for a good few hours to at least air dry before you can do anything else. There we go. Two brushes clean. Lovely. I'll put that on before I knock it over. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right. Two days dry, at least. So, hopefully that'll do us for the painting. Uh, like I say, ooh, hang on, just a touch of blue there, that didn't want there. Like I say, we'll gloss finish this after, it's, it's what, it's Tuesday now, so I'll leave this till at least Thursday just to have a look at how we're doing. Uh, and if it's dry enough that I'm happy with it, I'll gloss varnish it, possibly Friday. Yeah, it depends at the moment how the, the weather's going to be, because apparently it's going to freeze tonight which will reduce drying time a little bit because weather and things like that but uh, that's where we are now so I'll go away now, edit all this together and then by the time you get to see this hopefully I'll have started the decaling so in the meantime <coughs> excuse me, I got that frog out of my throat Bob Long, see my mates at emodels.co.uk you'll find odorless thinners such as these only full bottles because they won't have not theirs over like I do and Chris does now yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting away with this one, Chris. You've taken the mickey out of me often enough. Fox, you've got to give him some stick love. You'll find stuff like this at emodels.co.uk. You'll find this fella at emodels.co.uk. Well, all of him. You'll find things like this at emodels.co.uk. You definitely need this. You really do need that. Uh, what else will you find at emodels.co.uk? You'll find things like this, the army painter brushes that I used in the last episode. Was it last episode or the episode before? Can't quite remember now. You'll find stuff like that. You'll find stuff like this. You'll find stuff like this. You get the idea. Go see them. Go spend some money with them. Tell them I sent you. They won't give you the discount because they disavow all knowledge of me publicly and things like that. You'll find these as well. Things like this. Go visit them. Lovely bunch. And I will see you in the next episode, which I think will be episode 6. Magic, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you. If you've reached this point in the video, you're a braver person than I am. I'd have switched off by now. Yeah. <laughs> Did you fall for that? You fell for that, didn't you? Ah, bless you. Right, I'll see you next time. Take care, guys.